So good morning, everyone. I, today I'll be presenting on behalf of Medicine Two on the topic of crummy tummy. So coming to the history, we have a 19-year-old female, Miss Yen from Dharmapuri, a college student who presented to us with uh, complaints of vomiting since five years, which was her chief complaint. History of presenting illness, she was apparently well until five years back. She had attained menarche at 13 years of age, and since from her age of 14, she started developing recurrent episodes of vomiting. The vomiting was non-bilious, non-blood stain, and occurred one to two hours after eating food. And there were about 5 to 10 episodes of vomiting per day, occurring about 15 to 20 days a month. And typically, these episodes of vomiting started on the first day of her menstrual cycles. Many of the times during these vomiting episodes, she required hospitalization and IV fluid administration following which the vomiting settled. And the vomiting even continues 10 days later after the cessation of her menstrual cycles. And she is then free of vomiting over the next 10 to 15 days of the month. This cycle repeats every month. And there is occasional epigastric discomfort associated with the vomiting. She also complains of occasional bifrontal headaches with the vomiting. And this headache settles by the end of her menstruation. She also complained of crampy lower abdominal pain, which she rated uh, on a uh, pain severity scale of 6 by 10. And this uh, lower abdominal pain was starting three days prior to her cycles. And this also stopped by the end of her menstrual cycles. She also had lost significant amount of weight over the last five years, which she was not able to quantify. The negative history part, she denied any history of fever, abdominal distension, altered bowel habits, uh, jaundice or any burning maturation. She never had any behavioral changes or seizure disorders, no ear complaints, no white discharge. And she did not have any signs and symptoms to suggest a connective tissue disorder like joint pains, photosensitivity, rash or fevers. Past history wise, she didn't have any comorbidities, no history of any hypothyroidism, no history of any significant family history of uh, similar disorders. And her menstrual history, she had regular menstrual cycles and uh, each ble uh, bleeding lasting for three to four days. And she changes around three to four pads per day. Occasionally, she passes clots and uh, also has lower abdominal cramps associated with the menstrual cycles. Her vitals were normal, pulse rate of 88 per minute and blood pressures were normal. She had mild pallor on general examination. Otherwise, her general examination was unremarkable. And systemic examination wise, cardiovascular system, respiratory system were all normal. Her abdomen, she, uh, it was soft, bowel sounds were present. She had mild epigastric tenderness, but no organomegaly or free fluid. Breast and thyroid examination were normal. And uh, examination of the central nerve system, higher mental functions were normal. Cranial nerves did not show any uh, uh, cranial nerve deficit. Power was normal, tone was normal. She had slight exaggerated reflexes on the right side. Plantus were flexor bilaterally, sensations were normal, cerebellar signs, she didn't have any cerebellar signs, gait was normal and there was no signs of meningeal irritation. So coming to the syndrome, we are looking at a syndrome, syndrome of chronic, episodic and recurrent vomiting and the associated right UM and signs in a patient, young female. So differentials. We are looking at a young female with chronic, episodic and recurrent vomiting. Having a good number of differentials, porphyria, neuromyelitis optica, space occupying lesions, hypopituitarism, hypercalcemia, cyclic vomiting syndrome. So we'll go ahead with the differentials. 
So for the differentials for the chronic vomiting, we considered it in two separate aspects as uh, uh, chronic vomiting separately and as chronic vomiting with presence of UM and signs. For the differentials of chronic vomiting, we uh, looked at GI tract pathologies like gastroparsis, GRD, IBS, chronic pancreatitis, and uh, uterine pathologies like endometriosis. Endocrine causes of chronic vomiting that we looked for was hyperthyroidism, cortisolism, uremia, porphyria like uh, we saw in the differentials. And uh, since she was a young female, we thought of mitochondrial myopathies, DKA, presenting as recurrent vomiting. And for vomiting with presence of human signs, we considered uh, CNS aspects like TB meningitis, space occupying lesions, CNS lymphoma, abdominal epilepsy, and atypical migraine. Uh, last in our differentials are functional causes like cyclic vomiting syndrome and catamenial cyclic vomiting syndrome. And we also consider psychiatric uh, differentials like bulimia nervosa and anorexia nervosa last in the list. So uh, coming to the laboratory parameters, our basic uh, blood investigations are normal except for a microcytic hypochromic anemia with low iron and high TIBC. And uh, for endocrine workup, we did a TSH, cortisol, ACTH, and uh, everything was normal. Uh, her urine spot porphyrins were negative. We'll also look thought of lead poisoning for the recurrent abdominal pain and vomiting. But however, the lead levels were normal. Uh, to rule out myopathies, we did a serum lactates on the ABG, and which was normal. And uh, she didn't have diabetes. And for GI workup, we did a barium swallow, which was showed normal study and the upper GI scopies are normal. There was no uh, gastric ulcers or anything to suggest a cause for recurrent vomiting. Our ultrasound abdomen showed posterior wall uterine adenomyosis. For CNS causes, we did a lumbar puncture. There was no uh, pleocytosis or any uh, under ex expert TB was negative, BBVS were negative, EEG did not show any seizure activity, and her NMO screen, like one of you pointed out in the differentials, were negative. Uh, one thing the MRI brain pointed out was the present of, presence of a chronic infarct in her left caudate lobe and lentiform nucleus, which explained the presence of hyperreflexia on her right side. So uh, this is the MRI imaging showing a infarct in the left caudate lobe and the lentiform nucleus. Presence of here. Uh, present, why should a 19 year old female have an infarct in her brain with uh, thought of prothrombotic disorders? Uh, however, her prothrombotic workup so far has been negative. Her echo was normal, APLA was negative, ANCAS are negative, ANA was negative, homocysteine levels were normal. We have also sent a prothrombotic workup and the uh, results are pending. So finally, after ruling out everything, our current working diagnosis for this patient is uh, cyclic vomiting syndrome, the specific subtype being catamenial cyclic vomiting syndrome. Catamenial in the sense, it, the vomiting episodes start exactly on the uh, day her menstrual cycle starts. Uh, our patient so far, uh, her ultrasound showed presence of adenomyosis and we got a gynecology consult for the same. And she has been started on uh, progesterone injections and uh, she also had a... Uh, precipitating stressor. Uh, her father passed away five years back and uh, the onset of symptoms correlates with the presence of the stressor. She was also started on amitriptyline 10, 10 milligrams and after admission and after starting this medication, she has not had any further episodes of vomiting. Though her MRI showed a chronic infarct, she didn't have any presence of weakness and her prothrombotic workup is awaited. So uh, coming to cyclic vomiting syndrome, uh, the diagnostic criteria as per Rome 4 guidelines, the criteria it should include stereotypical episodes of vomiting, which is acute in onset and the duration being less than a week. And there should be at least three episodes in the past year and at least two episodes in the past six months. And uh, the characteristic la lack of vomiting between the episodes, other minor symptoms can be present between cycles like headache. Other supportive uh, criteria are personal or family history of migraine and uh, the criteria should be present during the previous three months and at least six months before diagnosis. The other criteria we use for diagnosing uh, CVS is uh, inter International Headache Society criteria. What differs from the previous uh, Rome criteria is that there is no specific timeline for the onset of symptoms. Okay. Just five attacks is enough to diagnose a cyclic vomiting syndrome. The rest of the uh, criteria is similar. The pathogenesis of cyclic vomiting syndrome, it is usually uh, multifactorial. Uh, causes can include a genetic causes like mitochondrial dysfunction, dysregulation of our endocrine uh, hormonal network, 
substance abuse like marijuana usage or opiate usage presence of emotional factors like stress uh, it can be uh, precipitated by diet it can be precipitated by lack of sleep precipitated by uh, abnormal circadian rhythm and presence of chronic stress and adverse life events there are four different phases in uh, cyclic vomiting syndrome first is the prodrome second is the emetic phase third is the recovery phase and the fourth is the interepisodic phase our goals of therapy in the prodrome phase is to abort an attack and in emetic phase is to terminate the attack and in the recovery phase we feed the feed the patient and the interepisodic phase we plan on preventing further episodes of vomiting so usually the episodes of cvs start early in the morning and uh, Uh, has intense persistent nausea and multiple episodes of vomiting the duration of symptoms lasts approximately 5 to 6 days in adults there are many specific associations of cyclic vomiting syndrome like catamenial cyclic vomiting syndrome where the onset of vomiting coincides with the onset of the menstrual cycles uh, there is also a strong association with migraine headaches there is a strong family history of migraines in 56% of patients with uh, cyclic vomiting syndrome it is also associated with diabetes pregnancy and uh, it has multiple precipitants like stress energy depletion states and uh, it is also associated with eating specific food products like chocolate cheese and msg coming to the treatment aspects of cyclic vomiting syndrome uh, abortive treatment when a patient presents with acute vomiting we just we have to hydrate the patient with dextrose potassium and we give thiamine supplementation the antiemetics which has been uh, studied maximum in cvs is ondansetron which has showed benefit other drugs we can use used in the abortive phase is benzodiazepines and nsaids like iv ketrolac and uh, prophylactic treatment the best evidence so far is with tricyclic antidepressants and we usually start amitriptyline and the target dose we titrate it up to 1 mg per kg per day the target dose is 50 mg per kg other tricyclic antidepressants which can be used is nortriptyline and doxepin uh, one thing that is uh, particular about this uh, treatment and prophylaxis is that we see a lot of overlap between the treatment between cvs and migraine and there is lot of correlation in the pathophysiology and the treatment aspects between migraine and cvs anti epileptics also have a role in cvs and uh, drugs like levetiracetam sonisamide also have have been shown to have benefit dietary supplements are also have to be shown to be have have a role like carnitine supplements and coenzyme q supplements so uh, this is uh, we don't have much of studies regarding cyclic vomiting syndrome and approach to chronic vomiting uh, this is one small study uh, showing the efficacy of tricyclic antidepressant therapy in adults with cvs which is a two year follow up study there was there were no controls in the study it was just a uh, two year follow up study which showed the efficacy of antidepressants in reducing the frequency duration and number of ed visits and hospitalization we see that the uh, at the end of one year the frequency has come down from 17.8 on an average to 5.4 which further reduces to 3.3 at the end of two years and the uh, the antidepressants also have a significant role in reducing the duration of cvs and also the number of ed visits and hospitalization so uh, take home points approach to chronic vomiting uh, we have to look it at a broader aspect we have to think of gi causes we have to also think, think of endocrine causes we should also think of cns causes and uh, cyclical vomiting syndrome is a diagnosis of exclusion once we have ruled out all other causes thank you um thank you <coughs> very well presented any questions okay only half a few um i have certain concerns about your case uh, because you said this is a young girl and she has got an infarct and you have done a prothrombotic workup so the prothrombotic workup is for venous or arterial thrombosis the protein c and all you sent arterial protein c protein s and the uh, factor v leaden venous thrombosis they are all for venous thrombosis the original workup is fine the other issue is she is a young woman with stroke so what are the other diseases you would consider which you not consider in your presentation You have to think of Mellars, Moya Moya disease, acute intermittent porphyria. All of them can present with stroke and vomiting. So those also have to be considered in your evaluation before you do it. And because women are misdiagnosed nearly ninety percent of the time. There's a book on it. Insufferable women who are not diagnosed. So you have your workup has to be complete. 
you cannot give a psychiatric diagnosis before you have worked up. Have you done renal blood lab tests? Yes, lab uh, tests. How much was it? One point six. Okay. The arterial or blood venous? Arterial. Venus. I asked very specifically. Have you done venous blood lab tests? So that is the ruling of the you have to work out of four five years. And what was the MRI finding suggested of moya moya? It was a cough of smoke. No, ma'am. Our uh, spot perforations are all negative. Okay. Emma, we did twice, ma'am. She's still admitted, ma'am. Yes, still have not completed our evaluation. So, so venous lab tests. So those are the other. I think he's still on. She's still on the yes. evaluation. Ma Typically, this is only thing is it's cyclical. So yes. uh, most of the other disease should. A persistent symptoms. So you are thinking in terms of what is it that causes cyclical symptoms. And of course, the only positive findings or organic findings that you have is an infarct that requires uh, evaluation by itself. But in terms of explaining vomiting, which is cyclical, I mean, there would really be not many causes that you can think of. And you have fairly ruled out GI causes and other uh, metabolic causes for the i mean none of the metabolic causes will also cause cyclical, cyclical. none of the gi organic causes may not cause cyclical so within cyclical i think there are less things so only thing you have got is a cns localizations cns findings whether that is related to the vomiting is it, other issue may not really fit in but on the merit of the infarct that is there you may still have to complete the workup just like dr Lanya said any other questions Okay, we'll go to the next case. Uh, our next case is uh, by Medicine 3, Black, Hello and White Spark by Dr. Lakshmi.